All right, welcome back everyone to another video of our latest uh, Unreal Engine multiplayer RPG series uh, where we go through everything about this engine pretty much. It's starting to look decent with the root motion, bear in mind, uh, root motion, locomotion is what I mean. Bear in mind that everything you see here is free uh, and uh, yeah starting to feel pretty nice just running around and doing stuff and um, as I said before I still recommend you getting some paid locomotion animations to make this look even nicer but it's working fine for now uh, and also I am locomotion things aren't like really my thing so you can probably find better tutorials for this out there but yeah this is one way to do it uh, I want to do one last thing uh, to bring us a little bit closer to that AAA feeling and that is to, to add some stock transitions because as you can see now this doesn't really look very nice so let's just quickly add a stop animation uh, I got a stop animation from Examo as you can see here uh, just go to Examo search for run to stop as you can see here and I showed you in the first video I think it was how to import from Examo easily with that super useful tool. So we're just gonna use that animation. We're not gonna, I've seen a lot of people when they do stop transitions, they do uh, use like, they get a variable for acceleration and things like that. And they update stuff on the event blueprint update animation. Uh, event blueprint update animation is a tick event. I read somewhere that it's more optimized than a than a regular tick on a play controller or another actor, but it's still a tick event, so it does update all the time, every time some, pretty much every frame. It's every time something updates, an animation updates, but that's pretty much every frame. Uh, so I try to keep away from this. I know in previous videos I've been using this unnecessarily. You can update most things from your play controller and just send it here instead. So we're not gonna touch this, we're gonna do it in a very, 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 very easy way. Uh, it's almost like cheating. Uh, I'm not gonna say this is the best way to do it, but it's working fine and it's definitely gonna be better on performance, but it might like not look exactly as nice. So we will see, use it if you want. Skip this video if you don't want to use it, I don't. You do you. So. Create four variables. I already have them create have them uh, created since I um, this is the second time I try to record this video. So W pressed, A pressed, S pressed, D pressed. So get your keys, A key. Uh, since it's A, it should be early. A key, there it is. And then we have W key. Found that one directly. S key. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Uh, PRS key. And we have the D key. D key. Found it instantly. Perfect. So, what we want to do is we want to set these variables on the WASD key presses. Uh, I'm not super sure about this because we do. Actually, we do press WASD a lot, uh, so they these bools are gonna be updated very frequently, but um, they are j not replicated or anything. They're only on the local client, so it's still not gonna be nearly as slow as the blueprint update animation or or bad for performance. So, do, do, d, do. So, on the on the pressed ones, you set the variable to true, and on the released one, you set it to false. That should be it. Perfect. What we need now is we need a function to check if the keys are pressed. So just create a new function, call it check WASD, make it a pure function, 
And what pure functions do, does is basically it's just a standard check. You can see there are no connection pins to it. If it's not a pure function, you're gonna need to connect it. It's gonna it has connection pins. So this one can be a pure function because we're just gonna use it as a check. So go into it, add a return node. Type add return node. And what we want to check here is if any of the keys are pressed. So you want to have an or variable. So W is pressed, or A is pressed, or S is pressed, or D is pressed. If any of these keys are pressed, it's going to return true. A key is pressed. You can name the return value a key is pressed. So create a branch and from the release nodes, the re release keys, drag all of them up here. And the thing we're going to check is we're going to check the WASD. So this returns true, a key is pressed, if any of the keys are pressed. And we want to play an animation from the false. So when none, if we release a WASD key and no other of the WASD keys are pressed, we're going to play montage. And the montage that we're going to play is going to be the stop transition. Connect it up. And yeah, always, because this is going to get confusing eventually in this tutorial series, because we're going to create a shitload of our own functions that we replicate. And this is one of them, server play montage. So remember to use the server play montage that we have created ourselves and not just a regular play anime montage, because that's not going to work and it's not going to replicate if you just use this. You need to call your own function server play montage. Uh, as player, so let's see. Bam, 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 bam. Doesn't need to be harder than that. It's pretty easy, and it looks all right. No need to complicate it by updating on every frame. Uh, there's one thing we need to do because if we spam now, this is gonna happen. If I spam the D key or whichever key, we don't need that. Luckily, in our last video, I think it was the last one, we did a new state called state can take action. Uh, what I want to do is go into animation states and rename this to can't take action. Because during this state, we can not take another action. So when we are breaking, we cannot take another action. Uh, and the reason it's still not working is because we need to add another check. Another branch, and it's going to be this one get can take action. So if the WASD keys are not pressed and we can take an action, so we are not in the middle of a dodge roll or an attack or something, then we're gonna play the animation. So this is me spamming now. I think this is fine because this is nice. Also, even if you just play around um, and you have to, basically you have to uh, customize this for your own game, obviously. Uh, I usually only use it for sprinting because for the regular, as you can see the regular one, I don't think it's necessarily needed. So uh, I usually do like this as well. And speed, we already have the speed variable from before. Or do we? 
why did I add that one? Is it something I've done between tutorials or did I do it in the last tutorial? Uh, why do we have the speed variable? I feel like it's because we did something. I'm just gonna assume we <laughs> we have it. We are setting the speed somewhere. Are we using it? Set speed. We are using it. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. It's for the camera tutorial. Uh, so we did it in the camera tutorial, so we do have the speed. Bam, good. Uh, so if speed is above 500, This is actually good. Uh, so we can do an AND bool here. So if speed is above 500 and we can take action, then we are gonna do the stop. So this is not sprinting and I don't really feel like you need a stop transition here because it's the movement, the standard movement that I'm using is very slow. So obviously you will have to customize this to your own project if you if you have a very fast action RPG game, uh, maybe you should do a stop transition on all of your movement states. I'm just gonna do it on the sprinting, as you can see. So yeah. That's about it for this video. A short one yet again. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's anything you're wondering or suggestions or whatever. So yeah, that's about it for this one. Let me know. Okay, thanks. Bye.